Hey guys, today we are going to talk about the numerous products that are coming out for Magic the Gathering and to save budget. I have been very good with my budget. As the screen rolls on, you will also see the new cards from Axlon, because why not? Anyway, let's talk about the new sets. July 14th, we have Hour of Devastation. August 25th, we have Commander 2017. September 29th, we have Axelon. November 10th, Murphy vs. Goblins. November 17th, Iconic Masters. November 24th, From the Vault, Transform, and Explorers of Axelon. So in November, we have Iconic Masters, a dual deck uh, from the Vault, as well as kind of a anthologies, if you will. December 8th, just in time of Christmas, we have Unstable, which should be a ton of fun and is the set I am looking most, I'm most excited about. Next, we have Rivals of Exelon on January 19th, and on March 16th, we have the 25th Masters, and then we roll on to April 28th with the newest set. Back back to the old, old Planeswalkers. Hopefully we get an Urza. That is the original Planeswalker. I think that's the one I really wanna see. So overall, I have done a very good job budgeting. Uh, one of the key things that I've learned is magic cards are very expensive on a limited budget. So if you hold yourself to $100 a month, I did very well, it's around 50 now then you can't really buy any expensive cards because your budget doesn't even allow you to buy one card. But it's very good because you kind of have to make do with what you have. I am not buying many standard cards. I am playing EDH. So any cards I'm buying are either due to FNM or FNM draft. I draft once a month now instead of every, I used to draft three or four times a month because they had Saturday draft and that has not launched in some time. I don't know, I did buy a few boxes. I have two boxes of Conspiracy Take the uh, Conspiracy 2. And I have a fat pack of Cons of Tarkir. I just wanted to buy the fat pack. I thought it was a great deal or $40. I noticed fat packs are much more expensive now. So I bought it. I have a few fat packs of, oh, I have a case of fat packs of O for the Gatewatch, as well as a case of fat packs of Magic Origins. So definitely something that is very cool. And we'll probably will open it on the channel. Origins doesn't have any value over the gatewatch the values in the wastelands or in the sealed land packet. So let me know in the comments below which of these sets you are most interested in and which of these sets you would want to buy and what is your budget. So my budget right now is $50 to $100 a month. That is the most I'm willing to spend on Magic. I've allotted my budget into other places such as Fire Emblem. I have a Nintendo Switch now, which is I on the first day I damaged it. So like I watched all of these videos telling me not to damage it and that's what I did. The, the screen. And it's a tiny bit, and I did buy the protective casing now. So yeah, um, also I found a dog on the street, and the vaccinations and the treatment, that was about $100 to go see a vet. And also the the fact that she has heartworms, that's another $500 to $1,000. Um, this is not the first pet I've had with heartworms. Uh, via adoption or finding the pet on the street, but it is a very sad, not everyone can afford that. Uh, luckily, I am in a position where I can. It does limit my finances in terms of recreation for some time, but I think for saving a dog's life, probably well worth, uh, well worth doing it. So um, pretty cool. And I am looking forward to this new set. I am looking forward to uh, buying unstable there the point is you don't need to buy every product you just need to limit yourself to a budget and say hey you know this is my $50 budget if I want to buy a box that means I can't really do XYZ that often I need to save up three months in advance to buy a box of unstable it's been a great life changer like I have just been happier 
I've been, um, it's because if you put too much money in cards, then you really do attribute a financial value to them. So when you see them get crushed over time and time again, you really feel bad because you're like, oh, Tamagoy, I bought it for, and I did buy my Tamagoy for 120. Now they're down to 80 or 90 across a playset, or in my case, I have four playsets, um, which seems like a lot, but it's because people borrowed my decks and they just returned. They only returned them because now they can't afford their Tamagoyfs finally, which is good and kind of bad. Uh, but at least I got my decks back. Um, I got two legacy decks back and a modern deck back, and I had Tamagoyfs in my rant. I just throw Tamagoyfs around in my random decks. So I have since sold them uh, before the price dropped too much. I think I showed them for a hundred a piece when, um, so they are, some of them are the original Modern Masters and some of them are the original Future Site, which goes for more than a hundred. It has been very good. And it's one of the things that I watch watching this show on Netflix, Hoarders or something, and you have to be forced to do it. Otherwise, I would just not ever sell the Tamagors. I would just continue to accumulate more if I wasn't on a budget. So being on a budget has been very rewarding for me. Um, it's been something that is both something that I want to do, but it's hard to do it but I've been enjoying the game more uh, because $50 is my current monthly magic budget and it really it forces me to look at what I want to buy, what I don't want to buy, uh, what is too expensive. Uh, one of the things that I was looking at was uh, Las Vegas, right? Las Vegas became too expensive because there's no way unless I saved like a whole year in advance and I just started like in 2017 with my budget. I couldn't afford to travel there under my magic budget. Um, now you can use personal assets and personal budgets, but at the end of the day, it is something that it's interesting. It's intriguing. It's interesting. Um, it's some, I feel like being on a budget has made me appreciate magic more from a player standpoint, where it used to be, oh, I'll just buy four play sets of Tamagores. That is just not possible when you're on a budget and it's not, it's highly illogical too. So I don't have any reasons. I used to buy collections from friends. I used to buy, you know, collections from stores, but on a $50 budget, you can't buy those collections. And a lot of times those collections just sit in storage or now in my garage and they don't, yeah, eventually you can accumulate value via, as I've shown, the Shadow Moor cards have all gone up tremendously in price, but it's not something that I would um, I would want to do or is financially responsible for me to do. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.